Things just keep getting better with Super Select AI. Hi friends, it's Dan, back again with another sneak peek. Today I want to talk about Super Select AI. It's had such a huge response. Everybody who's seen it is super excited about it, and we're getting a lot of great feedback from it. And the more we use it internally, the more cool things we learn that it can do, and the more ways we keep figuring out how to make it even better. So you've seen a couple of videos already on Super Select. I thought I would show you some of the improvements that we've made based on your guys' feedback. So first off, under the hood, we've been working hard on the semantic segmentation engine. That's actually what analyzes the photo and can break it up into the little parts. One of the things that we've noticed is that on certain similar subjects, for example, water, there's lots of different kinds of water. Water could be a river, it could be a lake, it could be an ocean, and it would identify those as separate regions, which made selecting a body of water difficult. You'd have to click several different things. And you might see that with other things as well. Maybe sometimes in architecture, it might identify a building versus a wall versus brick. What we've done is we've worked on grouping those similar things together, making it easier to make a single selection. Let me show you. So on this photo, you'll notice if I select the Super Select AI tool and I mouse over the water, it now selects all the water all at once instead of having it be multiple pieces. Same thing if I mouse over the buildings. All of the buildings are all selected in one architecture group, or the sky is all selected as one piece. So essentially anything that would be in the background of the photo is all grouped based on the kinds of things that they are. But other things, things that we call instances or objects, those we leave separate. So rather than lumping all the boats together, each boat is still individually selectable. As a matter of fact, even the people in the boats are individually selectable. So I could pick just individual people if I needed to as well. So that's really handy if I have a photo that happens to have two or three people in it or a person and a dog, I can pick each of those pieces separately and handle them on their own. Another area we're working on is improving the mass quality. So what we're looking at today is still a pre-release version. This is not the final version, but it's getting a lot better. Let me show you. I'm going to go up to the sky. I'm going to select that segment and let's pick something we want to add to it. In this case, I want to add more clouds to it. An easy way to do that is to add a texture on top of it. So I'm in the Filters tab. I'm just going to zip down here to my textures. This is actually something else that you can do now, is you can actually preview your presets and your filter styles from the preset browser right on that selected segment. So you notice as I mouse over, it's actually applying those textures just to that sky region. There's one in here that I happen to like called Dark Clouds, which actually gives me kind of a cloudy texture over that area. I'm going to select that. You notice the filter gets added over here in my effects tab. If I turn it on and off, you can see before and after. What I really wanted you guys to see is the quality of the mask. So I'm just going to hit the O key on my keyboard. And you can actually see the mask that it's generated for that sky automatically. That's a big improvement over what we've seen in some of the previous versions. And we still have a ways to go. We're still continuing to train the AI network that does the creation of the mask for you. And from here in that textures pane, and for any filter that I add, I can always use the option to control how strong it is. And another cool thing we've added is we've moved a copy of the feather slider up right to the tool option bar up here. What the feather slider does is it essentially blurs the mask. Sometimes the mask doesn't have to be perfect. It's almost better if it's softer. It helps blend in your effect. So let me show you. If I grab this feather slider and I move it back and forth, what it's really doing is it's softening that mask. And if I hit the O key again, so you guys can see that, what it's really doing is it's just blurring that mask back and forth. But you'll see how it actually blends it in and makes it look more realistic. It looks like there's more of a gradient across the sky. Now let's work on the buildings. I'm just gonna mouse down over here, highlight the buildings, and click to select them. They turn blue and they're selected. Another improvement that we've made is in the actual uh, pop-up menu. So there's several different ways you can pick what you wanna do. You could use the preset browser, you could use the combo box up here in the top, or what I like to do is I just right click on the photo. And that pop-up menu that we see now, that contextual menu, is now semi-transparent. It actually lets you see through it so you can kind of see the photo. And it's really handy if you're picking a very small area that you're trying to add an adjustment to. So now I can come through here and pick what I want to do. Let's add a LUT in here. And I'll just kind of pick one that I like. That's kind of a nice old world looking one. And again, I can just use the opacity slider to dial in the amount of that look that I'm going for. And then finally, let's grab that water and we'll make it blue as well. So I'll just grab the water segment. I'll just simply use another lookup table or LUT. I'm going to do it this time from the preset browser over on the left hand side. 
This is actually the same list that I was seeing in that pop-up menu, but I can just pick them over here as well. And if I mouse over those, you'll see how it previews on just that portion of the photo. How cool is that? So there we go. I added another lookup table or LUT to just the foreground. Let's take a look at the before and the after. So there's before, the original, and after. I was able to darken up the sky, add a few more clouds into it, and then add two local effects, one to the building, one to the water, without having to do any brushing or any layers or any complex masking. Super Select AI did it all for me. Here's another example that we've learned that it really shines at, and that's replacing a background. Not so much replacing a background, but enhancing a plain boring background. Again, effects comes with tons of great textures, and a lot of those were designed to look like backgrounds. But it was always a pain to have to paint them in or out. Watch how easy it is now with Super Select AI. I'm simply going to grab the Super Select AI tool. I'm going to click on the background, and then I'll go over to my textures category. Now, as I mouse over those thumbnails in the preset browser, you'll see how the background actually swaps out, and I can simply pick one that happens to look great in my scenario. You know, I actually kind of like these bokeh looks in here. Let's see if we can find one that looks great. Oh, there's one I really like. We'll use that one. I can essentially replace the background in a scene if I photograph on a semi-solid color background or even a background that's out of focus. I can either enhance or replace it by simply adding a texture. Let's take a look at the before and the after. There's the original photo. You'll notice I used a little bit of portrait AI on it as well to smooth out her skin a little bit. And the after, just like that. And I know you all want to know, what does that mask look like? Well, there's that mask that was automatically generated. You can see how it's even picked up the tiny little hairs on the back of her head and the tiny little hairs on the top of her head and blended it in so that it looks natural. All right, one more cool trick you can do with Super Select AI. You'll notice up here in the Tool Options bar, there's a mode called Paint In. That's the normal option. When I click on something, I want to add my effect to that region. But I could also do the opposite. I could have it apply to everything except for that region. That can be really handy if I want to change the whole background in a photo. I don't have to go through and pick a bunch of segments. I can just pick the thing that's important to me, the subject, and then I can apply an effect to the exact opposite of it. So watch. I can come in here and I can select both of the people. I'll change the mode from Paint In to Paint Out. And then I can just right click and pick what I want to do. I'm just going to go to the Tone Enhancer and I'll pick Darken. And there you go. It added that adjustment, but it added it to the opposite. So rather than adding it to what I selected, it added it to everything else. Let me turn that on and off so you can see. There's before and after, just like that. All right. There's a handful of cool things that we've learned about Super Select AI and some cool things that we've improved based on your guys' feedback. We're really excited about it. We can't wait to get it in your hands very soon. Thanks for watching.